We have four albums to get through in this video, none of which are good or bad enough to get their own videos, so let's get straight into it and try and get through them as quickly as possible. Pinkerton nearly destroyed Weezer completely. The poor reception and sales left them feeling dissatisfied with the music industry and made them want to run away from it all. At the end of the tour, the band decided to go on hiatus. Rivers Cuomo returned to Harvard, however he dropped out to focus on songwriting. He started a very short-lived band called Homie, but he disbanded it to work on new Weezer songs. The sessions featured Rivers, Brian Bell and Patrick Wilson, however bassist Matt Sharp was absent for them. Sharp shortly left afterwards to focus on his own band The Rentals. He was then replaced by Mikey Welsh. In late 1998, the band's rehearsal started to decline, caused by frustration and creative disagreements. Rivers found himself falling into a deep depression and would completely isolate himself away from anyone. The other members of the band disbanded in 1999 to work on their own project. Projects. However, the band's fan base suddenly started to grow on the internet and Pinkerton would become re-evaluated as an overlooked masterpiece. In 2000, the band agreed to get back together to play at Summer Sonic Festival in Japan. However, rehearsals went so well that they decided to stay together and make a new album. The band regularly worked on demos, leading to 75 of which they had to weed through before starting recording. They eventually went into the studio with 25 possible songs and they hired Rick Okasek, producer of the band's debut, to produce the record. Rivers intentionally wrote less personal and simpler lyrics to make an album as far away from Pinkerton as possible. In May of 2001, the spiritual successor to the band's debut, The Green Album, was released. The Green Album is essentially more of the incredibly catchy, bouncy and hard-hitting power pop of their debut, but giving an incredibly glossy new coat of paint. The album is in every way the complete opposite of Pinkerton, the lyrics are happier and more romantic, the instrumentation is clean and beautifully produced, and the aggression and raw slash heavy sound of that album is basically completely gone. The Green Album is full of some really good songs, some of the best songs the band have ever written. Don't Let Go, Photograph, Hashpipe, Island in the Sun and Knockdown, Drag Out are all incredible songs that are among some of the band's catchiest and most fun songs. This is an incredibly bright and fun record. Rivers proves on this album that he can write a really great pop song, but it doesn't completely sacrifice the band's rock edge. There is a lot of distortion and guitar solos throughout the album. Hashpipe shows the band's love of punk and heavy metal through its heavily distorted chords, aggressive drumming and chanted and incredibly catchy vocals. Knockdown Drag Out is very similar with its loud power chords and Beach Boys sounding backing vocals. The album shows the band also trying to experiment with different sounds and make something different from their first two records. Island in the Sun is a really beautiful power pop track with this funky rhythm and bright clean guitars. There are moments where the band show clear inspiration from college rock and many of the big alternative rock songs of the late 90s that teen comedies were filled with. Glorious Day sounds like something that could have been taken directly from an American Pie movie. This is also briefly shown on the closing track Oh Girlfriend which is a heart-wrenching farewell to a lost love. The thing about the Green Album is that when the songs aren't really great they're just kind of forgettable. It's incredibly frustrating how much filler plagues this album and I'd say almost half of the album is just okay and nothing more. There isn't a bad song on this album, but there is a lot that just doesn't stick out and make any impact on me. And considering the album is only 28 minutes, that's pretty bad. They definitely try hard, and I don't think the issues with this album are to do with the band. I think the issue with the album is that it follows two masterpieces. There was no way that they were going to carry on that momentum, especially if they wanted to completely distance themselves from their last record. It's a fun little record, but I don't think it's anything special. In a career that is mostly either really great or really bad, this is one of the only albums that isn't either. I like this album, but I don't think it's as good as it could have been, or as a lot of people seem to say it is. Shortly after the Green album's release, Weezer started working on new demos. During this time Welsh left the band and was replaced by Scott Schreiner who has been with the band ever since. Welsh ended up retiring from music not long after and sadly passed away in 2011. The band decided to regularly release demos on their website with the intention of getting feedback from their fans on their message boards to create an album that was exactly what the fans wanted. Following a spat with their label Geffen, the band funded the recording of the new album themselves, which they also self-produced. Rivers would constantly leak songs from the album to radio stations, leading some of the songs to re 
reached the charts despite official singles being released. Their fourth album, Maladroit, was released one day less than a year after the Green album. The album was a decent success, although fared slightly worse than the Green album did. It's since become one of the band's most overlooked and forgotten records, and I personally think that's a crime because this is one of their best albums. I think Maladroit takes the formula of the Green album and really beefs it up. The album is heavily indebted to heavy metal and it features a lot of heavy metal inspired riffs throughout the album, something that is still pretty rare for the band. The album is basically the best part of the Green album, that really catchy, simplistic pop rock sound, but mixed in with really loud, heavily distorted and at times face melting guitars. While the album has its forgettable moments, there is enough going on on this album to keep it exciting and one to return to. The track Dope Nose is one of my favourites on the album, written on the same night as Hashpipe. It's very similar in tone and lyrical content as well. Its lyrics are very strange and surreal. I'm not really sure what the lyrics actually mean at all. The chorus is really catchy. I love the woe chants in the song. The majority of the album is the finely crafted power pop that Weezer do best and they blend it really well with heavy instrumentation and the rawness that their first two albums were filled with. This feels like it could have been the stepping stone in between Pinkerton and the Green album because sonically it shares enough in common to be the thing that attaches them together. While Dope Nose and Keep Fishing were successful singles for the band, the album is filled with some really great hidden gems in the Weezer catalogue. Take Control, Slob, Burnt Jam, Space Rocks, Possibilities, Love Explosion and December are all really great songs that I find myself returning to regularly. It's really a shame that the album gets forgotten because I think it's a really great album. Shortly before the release of Maladroit, Weezer started to record and release demos for a new album in the same way that they did for that album. 28 demos were released, however after finishing their tour they decided to completely scrap these songs and start from scratch. They hired legendary producer Rick Rubin and headed into the studio to create an album that would return to the more personal songwriting of the band's early material that Rivers had completely stepped away from. After three years, their fifth album was finally released under the name Make Believe. Make Believe is a pretty legendary album in Weezer's discography, but not for the reasons the first two albums were. Make Believe is widely considered to be one of, if not the band's worst album. Rivers found himself taking influence from meditation to write many of the album's tracks, but it was criticised for its lyrical content and music which was considered lacklustre by many. To be completely honest, I don't hate Make Believe, I don't really like it, but I can't wholeheartedly tear it to shreds like many others have. I think pretty much all of it is very average. I think it has some really terrible moments, but there are some overlooked gems on the album. Perfect Situation is one of my favourites on the album, although it's pretty simple lyrically. I think it's incredibly catchy and has some great instrumentation. I especially love the guitar work on the track, which is some of River's best. I really love This Is Such A Pity. It's a very synth-heavy new wave song that sounds like it could have easily been on one of the last two Strokes records. His lyrics are definitely a little questionable, but I love the tone of the song and I think it has a really great chorus. The dueling guitar solo is really great as well. Peace is a really sad gut punch about River's struggles with depression. Lyrically it's very simple but I think the raw emotion of the song are enough to keep it from feeling lazy. The damage in your heart is a great little ballad. My best friend is really funny even if it is very cheesy and over the top. Freak Me Out is a strange little song about a spider. There's something almost haunting about the track and the usage of harmonics are really great but the lyrics are really bad. Apart from that, the majority of this album is just pretty generic. It's instrumentally decent, but a lot of the songs sound the same and lyrically it's pretty simple and sounds almost rushed. But it's not bad at all. Okay, if you know this album, you know I'm skating around a couple of particular songs because I was dreading having to listen to them again, but here we go, I guess. Beverly Hill sucks. I hate this goddamn song, it's the most boring, repetitive and terribly written song. The instrumentation is just a loop of the same thing over and over and lyrically it goes nowhere. River's vocals are lazy, he essentially raps these really bad lyrics about becoming a celebrity. I know a lot of people complain that this is exactly what the band are against on the first album and it stands against everything the band are known for, but I don't necessarily have an issue with that. I have an issue with how cringy the lyrics are and how awkward it all sounds. The majority of the track doesn't even try to rhyme and it makes the lyrics so frustrating to listen to. It's one of the top three worst songs the band have ever written. We Are All On Drugs is 
slightly better if only because the instrumentation is actually pretty decent but the lyrics are so on the nose and ridiculous that I don't know how anyone in the world can take it seriously. Do I find myself returning to make believe that often? No, honestly I've heard it more writing this review than I probably ever have but I don't think it's terrible. It's got some great songs but lyrically the album is pretty simplistic and most of the songs are very very generic. I understand the hate, I just don't completely feel the same way towards it. Although Make Believe saw very mixed reception from fans and critics alike, it was an incredibly successful album for the band. Following its release, the band took another break. Rivers went back to Harvard, graduated and got married. He also released a compilation album called Alone, which featured loads of demos and home recordings he'd done throughout the years. Bell and Wilson both went off to do their own side projects, as well as a brief acting appearance in the film Factory Girl. In 2007, the band started to record their new album which they split into three recording sessions. The first was with Rick Rubin, the second was done completely by them and the third was with producer Jackknife Lee. With this new album they wanted to make a much more collaborative album than before and so across the 10 tracks every single member of the band get to sing lead vocals on at least one song. The album that they released was 2008's The Red Album. Honestly, I think this album's worse than Make Believe. It has basically all the issues that Make Believe had. There are a couple songs I really like, at least one that is absolute garbage and everything else is just really average and forgettable. The opening track, Troublemaker is very similar to Beverly Hills. It's a repeat of the same exact chord progression with basically no progression or differences throughout the song. Rivers essentially raps the song Strange Lyrics, which were inspired by Eminem's rhyming style in which he uses words that sound similar but don't actually rhyme. The problem is, much of these rhymes don't sound the same at all, so it sounds really awkward. Not to mention, much of these lyrics are incredibly bad. Honestly, I only like this song because I think it's really really funny. It's a terrible song, but it's laughably terrible. Pork and Beans is a song all about the band's label trying to make them write more commercial music. Incredibly ironic considering what they've done since this album. It's a really straightforward and catchy piece of power pop. I like this song. I don't think it's as great as most people think it is, but it's one of the album's highlights. Everybody Get Dangerous is a fun little hard rock song, but lyrically it's pretty bad. Of the songs that the other members of the band sing, I think my favourite is Shriner's song, Cold Dark World. This is a really weird and kind of creepy song with these light-hearted lyrics about love, but the instrumentation is really eerie and off-putting. There are lyrics that don't work. If you need love, then I'll be there to sex you is a particular highlight. The worst song on the album is The Greatest Man that Ever Lived, which is hilariously terrible. It's a song which has 11 different sections inspired by different artists. These styles are rap, Slipknot, Jeff Buckley, Coral, Aerosmith, Nirvana, Andrew Sisters, Green Day, Spoken Work, Buck, Beethoven, and finally Weezer. It's like listening to a 10 second songs video, but if he did 11 stars for a really terrible song with the most egotistical lyrics in the universe. It's just an absolutely awful song, and I don't understand why anyone in the world thought this song was a good idea. Everything else is just pretty average. The instrumentation is very forgettable, and there's not much here that makes me want to return to the album. Lyrically, this is the point where River's lyrics went from being pretty simplistic or weird to being really, really bad. Although he's had some good lyrical moments, the majority of what he's written from the Red album to now is really, really bad to the point where a lot of it is incredibly funny. His surreal lyrical style is hilarious in the worst way, and I think the Red album perfectly represents that. The album received mixed reception from everyone, although it was generally considered a step up from Make Believe, even if commercially it wasn't anywhere near as successful. The band didn't wait long long at all before going back into the studio and making a new album. Album number 7. The album that I don't think anyone can agree was a good decision. While I think Make Believe is better than people say it is, this next album is one of the worst albums I've ever heard. Ratitude, here we come.